Hello and welcome to DRN One Live Radio Station for the Tracy Lee Cook Show, Australia's number one indie radio station, coming to you from Perth, Western Australia. Download your DRN One app for all of your indie music special guest competitions and podcasts and show links from Australia's number one indie radio station and soon to be on Apple TV. We'd love to hear some feedback on what you would like to see next and the feedback we have got on what you would like to see next on DRN One Life in Australia is a lady who is a phenomenon in the States. She is an industry lead leader. She is a social media superstar. Her name is Christina Whiteley. Welcome, Christina. Oh, Tracy, thank you so much for having me. It has been so great to connect with you these past few weeks, and I'm so happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much. Now, I want to share a little bit about what kind of superstar you actually are, because us Aussies love hearing about uh, power women, especially in the States, all over the world and globally. And I'll let Christina share her story because it is very um, uplifting, inspiring and powerful. But she was a successful hairstylist and she owned and operated a salon um, on site in a wedding business. And I was a, um, a beauty therapist in the um wedding business as well so wow. a few things in common there I've worked with a lot of hairstylists and she earned to you know she really earned to make a bigger impact which she has and you know other than the hair industry she wants to work and show opportunities and empower other women and other people and instill confidence and give insight uh, beyond what what she was able to do with her hairstyling clients, bigger, right? We all dream bigger. And four years ago, Christina started an online business and she has a really powerful health story and journey to share with you as well. And she's a big influencer. She's an author. She is a public speaker, content marketing, social media guru. All that aside, she's been on a powerful health and wellness journey. Now, we'll be sharing Christina's links out. So if you want to connect with her, uh, please do, because she's got a lot of insight. She's very, um, very supportive of absolutely everybody. She's so down to earth, so, so real. I can't rave enough about this powerful woman. And she strives to empower women to follow their passion, right? We've got to follow our passion and live a life that will inspire those around us. So welcome, Christina, once again. Who are you? Where does your, your journey start? And um, that was just a few insights. And I kind of skimmed right over it and packed it all in there. But there is so much to know about you. And I'm so intrigued. And I know our audience, especially in Australia, loves hearing stories like yours. So where does your, your health and wellness journey start? And who is Christina? Oh my goodness. Listening to that list of things, sometimes I feel like I'm living a dream. You know, um, if you would have asked me five years ago if this would have been my life, I would have laughed in your face. I, I would have said, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, I, I really feel blessed for these past few years. I've learned so much. I've been connected with such great human beings. And, and here's the thing, you know, as much as I love doing hair, um, the, what I loved about it was making people feel more confident. I wanted them to feel better about themselves. I wanted them to feel better um, after they left than when they came in. And so I've just learned how to transfer that gift in a, on a bigger platform. So a little bit about me, this is so crazy because really like if Tracy, if you knew me, I'm a hot mess mom and I'd love to sit on a patio and drink a margarita with you. Like that's who I am. <laughs> but the, like the crazy thing is, is that your life twists and turns and you decide what that looks like. Um, I, I want to tell you that I'm a small town girl. I, I went to university for music because I was a good singer, um, but I didn't have the belief back then that I could do anything. And so I dropped out of university. Uh, I became a hairstylist and I will never forget the first day, uh, one of the classes, because I was in a teaching salon and one of the classes was the $100,000 hairstylist. And I will never forget that class because what she did is she broke down goals. She showed us how to take a big goal and break it down so that you knew exactly how many clients at what services you need per month to get there. 
And I always kind of had that in the back of my mind. Now I went on to do hair for 11 years. I owned the, my own salon. I had a team of women. We go on site and we do weddings and it was fabulous. It was so much fun. We made great money. But what I noticed over the years is as the cost of business went up, I was making less money. Mm. And as time went on and I got pregnant, time was more important to me than money. <laughs> you know, all of a sudden my priority shifted and I gotten into the hair industry. Cause I was like, ah, I can always work from home. I can make my own schedule. I can make as much money as I want, as little money as I want. But I also didn't realize I was trading dollars for hours and I didn't consider that I would be working evenings and weekends. And when my daughter was born, I didn't want to miss out on singing her to sleep at night. I didn't want to miss out on reading her books. I didn't want to miss out on going camping or to the beach on the weekends. Like that is not why I became a mom. I became a mom to be the fun mom that we make memories and we have a great life. And like, that's what I wanted. And so very slowly we started making decisions um, in our life that would kind of gear us towards a different life than our city life. And that started far before my daughter. We started making decisions that we'd eventually move out to the country um but what ended up happening is three weeks after she was born I had a really bad shoulder injury so I was unable to go back to work um I was self-employed so I didn't have maternity leave whoops um and so I saved up a little bit of money and and what I realized is you go through ten thousand dollars very fast when you have a baby like <laughs> way faster than I thought so oh, yeah. I started I started to panic and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do right and I'd seen this girl on social media that was posting about stuff online. And so I got into that industry and lo and behold, you know, we were able to be stay at home parents and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and we've changed our lifestyle. So we've gone from busy chaos in the city, which by the way, this is part of health, right? Finding a, mm -hmm. a place where you can relax and rest and recover. Uh, so we sold our house in the city. We moved to our dream acreage of the country. We paid off all of our debt. So that was great. But what I didn't tell you all along is the reason that I got into business was because I wanted to help other people with their health. Um, I had been struggling for years with my hormones. Why? Because I was exposed to chemicals all the time as a hairstylist. Mm. I was struggling with my, my weight. I was struggling with my mood. I was struggling with everything. And I couldn't understand why I was having such a hard time. I think I told you before we started uh, talking about this, but I've gained and lost 40 pounds in my life three times. And I only have one baby. So that's you do amazing. The math. <laughs> right. And, and so totally I always struggled relate. with that. Um, I can totally relate to the to the chemical thing as well because I was in the beauty industry, so I used course. to work with a lot of hairstylists. So hearing the chemical thing really speaks volumes to me. Volumes, yeah, you know, and 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 also <laughs> like when you get pregnant, all of a sudden, or you have kids, or you know, you have a purpose other than yourself, all of a sudden, like toxic chemicals in your house become a different thing. You're like, I don't want any toxic chemicals in my house. I don't want anything bad. Like even pregnant, right? You realize anything you put on your skin, you're absorbing into your body and the, the your baby is absorbing those things too. And so that's kind of when things started to shift. But I didn't realize before when I was struggling with my weight, with my hormones, all that kind of stuff. What I came to realize after getting very, very sick was I was celiac. And I didn't know for years. And, and what happens with celiac disease is it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you're in so much pain every time you eat, you're just like, forget it. I don't feel like eating anymore. And I was struggling. I was like, why do I keep getting weight? I'm going to the gym six days a week. I'm going to hot yoga. I'm doing everything right. I thought I was eating healthy because this is what the food pyramid says I should be eating and it's healthy. Mm. But what I learned over the course of many years in this process was that number one, your food, your food is the biggest primary factor of your health. And what you put in your body is so freaking important that you are either fueling your health or fueling your sickness with every single bite or sip. Food and when medicine. I recognize that, 
Yes, it absolutely is. And when I recognized that, when I found out I was celiac, I dropped all my sugar. So every, every like bit of sugar, I got a little bit in fruit, but no, I didn't even eat tropical fruit. And then I dropped my, my gluten and which was like, yes, grains. Yes. All that kind of, I dropped all of it. Even, even at the time I dropped rice, I have gone back to eating rice. Cause I do like carbs. Okay. You have to live too. <laughs> so to live. I, we went paleo for a while. And so we were strict vegetables and meat and, and I cleaned up my system that way. I healed my system that way. And through the process again, realized how important gut health was. Um, you know, so I had to repopulate my gut health with different probiotics and enzymes and all that kind of stuff. And once I had a healthy gut health, all of a sudden I wasn't nauseous every day. I wasn't exhausted. I wasn't depressed. I wasn't stressed. I didn't have anxiety, like those like anxious feelings all the time, all of that cleared up and it started in my gut. And mm. so we went on to, we went on to do a little bit of keto. And so I, I kind of want to talk about that because we tried paleo and then I was hungry all the time. And I was a little bit hangry. And so we got into keto and then that was too high fat for my body composition. And it actually didn't make me feel very good. And so why I'm sharing these things with you is because I don't believe in a one size fits all diet. Mm. I don't believe in it at all. Right. No, I, I believe that every person, whether it is your ethnicity, your background, like all of those things come into play on what your body type should be eating. And so you really have to look at it holistically. And once I got that all dialed in, I lost, you know, 30 pounds in six weeks like gone. That's right. I started amazing. exercising differently. I wasn't killing myself at the gym, but instead doing 20 minute intentional workouts and then going home, it was amazing, you know? And so I just started to shift those things. And when I realized the difference in my health, in my body and, and, and how I felt about confidence, right. Having the confidence to show up, I, I realized, Hey, like when you feel and look your best, you also contribute more to society. You also help people more. You do all of those things. And I saw that there was a better impact that I could make not only for women in business, but I could also make that impact in health. And so that was something that was really important to me. So I found a company that was in alignment with me because I think that, um, I, th I think that having, uh, a certain amount of supplements in your diet is really important because we don't get everything that we need in food. And so I found something that I was going to take anyways. And now I get to share those things with other people and help them feel better, look better, lose weight, feel more energy, whatever it is that they need, or help them create a non-toxic environment in their household. And it all works synergistically together. I get paid to be healthy. And I also get to share that and help other people. So, you know, if, if health is something that people struggle with, I highly recommend that you take it into your own hands. Like you don't need to wait for a doctor to figure it out. You can figure it out too. Well, sometimes we wait for that prognosis or that diagnosis before we actually start making those changes. And back in 2016, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer and, you know, I was eating what I wanted. I was going out, I was drinking beers at barbecues on the weekends and <laughs> yeah, kind of had that diagnosis. I thought, holy cow, like why <sighs> didn't I do this 20 or 30 years ago? Just starting to take those those little changes and make those little changes every single day. You don't have to do it all at once. We don't have to eat the whole elephant. You know, we just have to do it by <laughs> bite. But no. gut health. I don't um, recommend that either. Like going cold turkey. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hard. But what I found as well, and this is why I, I love your story. And this is why I think so many people resonate with your story is because it's so real. We wait for that prognosis or that diagnosis before we go, oh my God, I've got to make changes. And then we get, you know, mid-century plus like myself and we go, why didn't I do this 20 or 30 years ago? And meanwhile, our children are little sponges. They absorb absolutely everything that we're doing. So what we're eating and dishing up and things like that, they're eating as well. So we have to ha definitely look at it holistically. And I noticed a difference since I removed a lot of the chemicals in my home with eczema and psoriasis and skin conditions yeah. and washing my clothes just in something chemical free. We couldn't figure out why we're getting all these rashes and things. Yeah. So everything we have on our body, this is what you, going back to what you said about everything we put on our body absorbs into our bloodstream, right? So if we're not actually looking at, what we're doing in our home, what we're putting on our bodies, what we're putting in our bodies, it is a holistically approach. So we have to look at ab absolutely every single aspect. You know, there's no use um, 
for example, buying a face cream, putting a face cream on if you're not going to do the rest of your body or you're still going to eat KFC every day. You know, um, right. we have to have a look at the whole package. And I think this is where a lot of people, and this is what I find in the health and wellness show, a lot of people aren't looking at absolutely the whole picture. They're just looking at this little little part. And to look at the little part to start with, I don't know if you agree with this or not, Christina, uh, it, it's just making a start. Okay, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to build and then I'm going to build and it turns into this compound effect. Do you, do you find that as well, that when people start having a look at their gut health or having a look at you know what they're, they're using around their homes, do you think they kind of start small and go big? Is this something that you found within the, the health and wellness this industry? Yeah, well, you know, I think that what happens is we have a trigger and that trigger, what pe people are motivated by either pain or pleasure. And so that pain, whatever that pain point is, maybe it's gut health. Maybe we feel nauseous all the time. Maybe we're gaining weight. Maybe we're doing something. There's some sort of symptom that we want to fix. And mm. so it comes in a, a symptom, but it could be a bigger problem. And once you start going down that rabbit hole, it can be a lot, a, a huge shift in your household. But here's what I like to, I, I like to help people with because look, quitting stuff sucks. Like we all know that, like whether you are involved in Lent and you quit for whatever 40 days, or like you're involved in, uh, you know, New Year's resolutions, I should say you make, you're involved in, you make New Year's resolutions, right? It sucks to give stuff up, to quit doing stuff. Like I don't want to quit eating anything, okay? But what is easier is when you implement a new healthy habit that can take over for an old bad habit. So for example, a new really easy healthy habit to implement is drinking one glass of water first thing in the morning and one glass of water before each meal. Okay. I'm already telling you that you're going to be drinking more water than usual. And that that is actually something that everybody should be doing. We should all be drinking eight glasses of water a day. You should actually be drinking half of your body weight in ounces a day. But like, honestly, Tracy, are you doing that? I am doing that. I am doing that. And it did take I'm me a very... good two months to actually implement that because when you're at work and you're doing a nine to five, you've got your water bottle on your desk, but you're not allowed to have your phone. And I was relying on my phone for notifications. Drink water now. <laughs> right. right. And so like, Tracy, you know what? I, I love that you answered yes to that question because I can answer yes to that question only because I implemented it as a new healthy habit. Right. But nine times out of 10, when I ask people, Hey, um, you know, how much water do you drink a day? Not enough. Okay. So you know that that's an easy habit. And by the way, if you don't like drinking straight water, then find a little like healthy probiotic or find a little energy pack or find a little greens or, or, you know, uh, minerals that you can mix in and it makes your water taste great. And it's healthy. Like, it's okay. You can have hacks during the day, but if you set that or set a reminder in your phone and implement that, like you said, it took you two months, but now it's a habit. You drink more water on a daily basis. And now that your body's used to it, you actually get thirsty more often. Right. Mm, and so indeed. stuff like that, you know, implementing, uh, you know, if you're not getting enough greens, taking a green supplement every day, uh, because who's getting eight servings of veg? Like, yes, most people are not, by the way, like you might be some of the people because actually most of your listeners probably are because they're listening to the health channel, I'd imagine, <laughs> but you know, it's hard and it's hard to get your kids to do those things. And so it's finding healthy hacks that will work for you and your family to make sure that you get what you need in your body for the energy, for optimal health, right? But it's not difficult. And so if you can find little hacks in your life, like instead, I know this is so simple, but taking the stairs instead of the elevator, it's such a simple thing to do. But if you can do those things, park two blocks away from your appointment and walk, like, you know what, it's not a big deal, right? If you can think of those little things during the day, you can actually fit a lot more into your life and, and have the healthy outcome. Oh, definitely. And I know recently I've started catching the, the train to my day job and I deliberately um, uh, power walk between because it's a connector train. So I deliberately power walk. And that is my 15 minutes of a morning 
for my power walk. So even if you're working nine to five, it. even if you've got 12 kids, you know, just think, okay, what, um, and that's such, such valuable information, Christina, it's just breaking it down into little bite-sized chunks. It's like, okay, so we identify where in your day you can actually make just a slight change. And yeah, I could walk to my next train and have plenty of time. But if I decide to power walk for 15 minutes to my next train, then I'm taking control over what goal I want to achieve. And then I feel accomplished because I'm doing that first thing in the morning. So I'm just kind of like, if I just do that 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night between the trains, there's my half an hour of power walk every day. And it's not having to get home at seven o'clock at night and go, oh, I'm going to exercise now, (laughs) you know, because you've already done it and you feel accomplished. Absolutely. There are so many little simple hacks that you can do that will make your life easier. And it could be even doing 25 jumping jacks before you make a phone call because it actually changes your energy, right? If you're feeling like a little bit tired, you've had a long morning. Sometimes if I'm going to come do an interview, if I'm going to come do a live video, I'll literally do 25 jumping jacks and go live. My energy is different, right? And so it's the little things that you can add to your day that really are not that difficult. And the other thing, you know, you don't have to be perfect. And by the way, don't beat yourself up if you're not perfect, because the only day that matters is today. Tomorrow doesn't matter. Yesterday doesn't matter. And so what we do is we eat healthy all week. And then Sundays, guys, I binge. I eat burgers. I eat fries. I eat milkshakes and ice cream. Like I eat whatever the heck I want on Sundays, chicken wings. I do it all. And, and I feel that if I do that on Sundays and that's my day that we just like pig out the rest of the week is easy for me to maintain. Cause I'm looking forward to Sunday. <laughs> I think so many people can identify that. In Australia, we've got a thing called the Sunday roast. So everyone has a, oh, I love nearly it. everyone has a, the Sunday roast, you know, whether it's, you know, whether you're, you're plant-based or not, like you roast something, right? And um, I look forward to those, those big roast potato carbs on my plate, you know, full of, you know, organic vegetables and, um, you know, my big roast potatoes on a Sunday. So I, I love the cheat meals, you know, it's like I've worked hard all week, you know, yeah. I, I deserve this, this big plate of potatoes. <laughs> I support you in that wholeheartedly. <laughs> but, but I can do that because I've got myself to a place now, like many of our listeners that are either starting on a journey or not quite sure where to start or have started and it's dropped off. And that's okay because uh, we've all been there and nobody yeah. is perfect, like Christina said. But just to get to that place where you know that, yes, okay, I'm drinking enough water. Yes, I am adding exercise to my day. And I tell you what, once you add exercise to your day, I mean, we've got nine grandchildren. The energy that you actually get to run around with your grandchildren when you know that your gut is in good health, you know that you're drinking water and just exercising a little bit every day. A year and a half ago, I'd be like laying on the lounge going, go and get Nana or so-and-so. But just the energy that you can get just by adding your supplements and your um, probiotics and really making those little changes. I've seen changes within the first three weeks of my energy levels. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, even the grandkids are like, oh, Nana runs around the front yard with us now and things like that. I mean, that's amazing. I mean, there's so many people that just sometimes I think to get to a certain age and go, oh, why bother? I'm too old for that now. And you're not. Like anybody can do this. Anybody can just start taking some supplements. Like Christina said, take the stairs instead of the elevator. And the changes, the brain fog, the focus, you elevate yourself, you feel a lot more self-love and self-worth again. And you actually, like Christina said, you feel more confident. Just the confidence levels. It's like you can take on the world and I've really seen that as a as a grandmother you're a young mom young hot mess mom you've seen that <laughs> totally my hot mess <laughs> <laughs> and um you know all these women that are listening to this men as well you know if you want to make small changes I mean by all means get in contact with Christina because she will show you the way she will show you where to start so you need to get in contact with her because she is changing the way she's got lots of life hacks that she shares 
and even with your own uh, weight journey as well. I mean, 40 pounds in six weeks or eight weeks, was it? Yeah, so I had 40 pounds. So I lost the first 30 in six weeks and then it took me two more weeks to lose the last 10, you wow. know? Um, but that was just, a, that was a significant lifestyle change. I cut out I cut out sugar and cut out gluten. And when you do those things, your body adapts. You know, I, sorry, I, I don't know if it's okay if I tell you one more really quick story. I don't want to take up your Definitely. time. Definitely. That's so okay. I just want to give you this perspective because, so we talked a little bit about our, our kids watching us, right? And so I was blessed to be raised from an Italian family. So actually it was really funny when I told my mom that I was celiac, like think about like the pasta, the gnocchi, the everything, like all of the stuff that the bread, oh my God, the, that's the one thing I miss, right? And so my mom was like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to our family. <laughs> When I told her I was celiac. I was like, mom, I am not dying. I don't have cancer. I don't have any sort of disease. Like this is, this is okay. This is curable with a diet. Like it's okay. Right. It was so funny. But what I want to say is, look, I was very blessed to have, I have centurions on both sides. My noni passed away at my Italian grandma passed away at 104 and my other passed away at 102 and she was a Ukrainian. Okay. Both of them love to eat. That's why I love to eat. So my Noni, she had a big property. She had acreage and she had a massive garden. She ate so many vegetables. She had fruit trees, like cherry trees, plum trees, hazelnut trees, apple, pear. And then her garden had every vegetable that you can think of. Okay. She grew all of her own herbs, all of her own lettuce, everything, everything. She ate from that garden for many, many years. And she was very healthy. She drank wine every single day and she was very healthy. The wine that she made, okay? And so their lifestyle was different back then. They didn't have the social pressures. They spent a lot more time with family. They spent a lot more time outside in their garden being active. They spent a lot more time doing all of those things. Like I will never forget the story of my mom going up to visit my Noni and she's 99 at this time. And my mom like hears this commotion in the basement and she goes downstairs and my Noni had bought live chicken from the neighbor and was killing them and plucking them in her basement at 99 years old and just like, what is I happening right okay and so their lifestyle was different back then our lifestyle is of convenience now there is way more fast food there was never fast food back then there wasn't even restaurants they ate from their garden they ate organic grass-fed beef and and whatever game meat they got from hunting okay and then now we eat whatever's convenient whatever processed foods that we have our bodies have not evolved that quickly to adapt to that kind of food so if you're not eating from a garden, like things that you could eat from a garden or from a farm every day, then there's got to be another way, right? There's got to be some sort of wake up call that we have because we can't have our health and eat things that are not succinct with our energy. Like we, mm. we shouldn't even be eating sugar. We shouldn't even be eating these mm. processed foods. And then we're wondering why we're overweight. We're wondering why we have chronic illness, chronic pain, and we're riddled with disease. Like it is not shocking that obesity is the number one preventative cause of death in the U S mm. like the number one preventative cause that is insanity, right? diabetes, all of those things stem from that. And so it's our job to educate our kids. It's our job to show them, hey, like you can grow your own food, have some respect for it. And then also appreciate when you have it and have good food. I know groceries are very expensive. I have been to Perth. I have been down there. Mm -hmm. Your groceries are astronomical. But what I do know is that your food is good. It is chemical free. I know your meat is chemical and hormone free. I know that you guys have a good shot at a lot of things and you've got a lot of great produce and a lot of great things. So I know that it's been a rough year probably with all the fires and it's been mm. insane down there for you guys. Um, you know, much like up here with the drought and the fires and all that kind of stuff. But the best thing that like, I think this is so crazy, but I'm going to tell you anyways, the best thing that you can do is grow a garden in your backyard. Teach your kids how to grow a garden. Mm. Teach your kids appreciation for stuff like that, right? Because 100%. life is only going to get busier. And, and it is really important what you feel your body with.
So I, I, I like had to I say that, that because there's, there's so many people that are unaware of like this massive transfer of, of lifestyle. And it's not normal to be sitting at a desk all day. It's not normal to have lunch delivered to you in a box. Like those are not normal things, but yet here we are. So exactly. No, I'm really glad that you touched on those points as well. And I've just got this um, vision of a 99 year old in a basement killing chickens. <laughs> she was a Love legend. It. She was a legend. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And I do, I, I have ordered one of those, um, what do you call them? A vegetable tower. Cool. And you can grow I love it. Um, yes. Almost hydroponically from these yes. towers. So I can't wait for that to arrive. And the grandkids will absolutely love it. They love getting little seeds and they love getting into the compost and yeah. watering it and watching it grow. And what good life skills that's um, teaching them as well, because these are absolutely. the next generations. These are the ones that are going to be, you know, environmental science and ozones and chemicals and saving our waterlands for, for generations to come. And it all starts with us, the responsibility to create that absolutely. legacy, to look after for our environment and to be able to train almost the next generations who will go on to train almost the other next generations to actually save the planet and it all starts with little daily changes little life hacks have a look and explore your day to see where you can implement you know your water or your exercise and just start making those changes and your kids and your grandkids are going to be watching you they're going to be watching you they're going to be learning from you and they're little sponges even when you think they're not watching they are watching 100 percent so Absolutely. start making those everyday changes. And I really like those life hacks where we can implement them. Thank you so much for sharing those, Christina. Um, for our audience today on DRN1, what kind of message would you like to leave our audience with today? Oh, wow. You know, um, I, I, I discounted myself for many years. I talked myself out of it. And, and I, I, I know um, that there's probably some people that are sitting here and thinking about, um, you know, oh, this seems like such a big health journey, or this seems like, you know, I, you know, I talked a little bit about business and how we've been able to create this lifestyle where we've been able to be at home. My husband just planted 400 apple trees, actually 500, sorry, we're, we're going to have an estate cidery here. Um, the reason that I'm talking about these things, having, you know, we have chickens, having your own garden you create the life that you want to live. Like you are the person, every choice, every day creates your life, creates your health, creates your family, creates the relationships in your life. And when you understand that, and when you know that you start to be a lot more aware of the decisions you make, the people you hang out with, the people that support you. Right. And so if you are looking for a community of people that want to stay healthy, that want to do more in life, that want to make an impact, that want to help other people, that want to raise the bar, that want, you know, that, that see a bigger picture, that have a bigger vision, get around those people who you hang out with matters. And if you're sitting there trying to make some life decisions on, on, you know, maybe you're going to start a new health journey and you're sitting there with your coworkers and your coworkers are eating chips and cheesies on their lunch break, and you need to go for a walk with somebody, find somebody to go for a walk with, even if it's not in your building, even if it's a friend downtown, you know, like make the decision to find people that facilitate your best self and you can't lose, you can't lose. And those people you may see as a little bit, you know, as good as you, if not better than you, I always hang out with people that are better than me because they allow me to dream bigger and they allow me to, to step up and be the best version of myself. Oh, I love that. And we have to strive to be the best version of ourselves and give people a helping hand up and not a push down, especially off the tail end of 2020. If 2020 has taught us anything, it's about being more kind to other humans and being the best versions of ourselves. So that is a great message. Please take Christina's advice. She does know exactly what she is talking about. And I can't wait to uh, go to the US when the planes open up and come and have some uh, cider at, uh, at your place. Christina, that sounds great. Some apple cider. Now, thank you very much uh, for adding such value to DRN One Life audience today by sharing some really valuable 
information and insights. And if you want to connect with Christina, we will be sharing her links out. Uh, make sure you connect with her. So if you've enjoyed today's topics and special guests and you want to see more, make sure that you download the DRN1 app, subscribe, share and give us some feedback. We thrive on feedback at DRN1. And we can give you more of what you ask for. So have an awesome day until next week's show. Thank you very much, Christina Whiteley from the US on DRN One Life Australian radio station. Remember, figure out who you are, do it on purpose, and it is goodbye from the Tracy Lee Cook Health and Wellness Show. Bye for now. <laughs>